How the hell are you? It's me, John, with another installment of A Super 73 Story. If you're picking up what I'm laying down, please like and subscribe. I'm very active in comments, so hit me up. Hey, what's up, Gnome? What do you think about spending $3,000 on a bike and then just using it to hang clothes on? <laughs> yeah, I know. Pretty stupid, right? That moment when you're sitting here with a fully customized Super 73 S2, but you can't do anything with it. I can manually pedal my ass around town with an 80 pound bike, but that's no fun. I tried that. Now I read an article written back in February that said Super 73 received a huge influx of cash from investors and part of that money was supposed to go towards customer service and making parts more readily available. Hopefully that's the case. My situation is definitely going to put that to the test because I have a Super 73 that doesn't work and I'm working with customer service right now to get it fixed. We've emailed back and forth several times and they've already sent me out a display module, which unfortunately wasn't the problem. And they're sending me currently a battery, which should be here in a few days. Hopefully that is the problem. If it's not, I don't know what the next step is. Maybe I'll have to take it down to Irvine, which is about an hour and a half drive. And that's fine because I would rather have it fixed sooner than later. I don't want to have to pay to get it shipped. I just want to be able to ride it as soon as possible. It's already been almost two weeks since it's been down. What the hell, Super 73? I mean, I can't, it's just, I can't even, it's not like, I, it's, dude, dude, seriously? The good news is, I finally got my seat installed, so I'm pretty modded out right now. I'm good to go. I just need to be functional. It's so hard with Super 73 because I really love this bike. I really want to like the company. You pay so much for these bikes, and after a few weeks, they let you down because something goes wrong. And I'm like, I gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, maybe I just got a bad one. And for the majority of the owners out there, what I hear is positive. You know, there are... It seems like maybe one out of 10 that have issues. Some of them similar to mine, some of them completely different, which is kind of scary for me because when I get this problem fixed, I don't want something else to go wrong. And it seems like if you own a Super 73, Facebook is a really cool tool to use because if you have any questions, you can join a bunch of different groups that are out there like the mods group, or in my case, the San Diego group. And they're always really helpful. It's a really tight-knit community, but there are literally members from all over the world in these Facebook groups, which is cool because everybody has different issues. It's really cool being able to connect with other people that are so far away on the same kinds of issues that you're having. Some of the people from these groups have even helped me try to diagnose what's going on with my bike, unfortunately to no avail, but most people are really cool about it. Now, there are some people that get kind of aggro. Uh, I saw a guy today that was getting kind of stepped on on Facebook because he asked if he could use WD-40 on his squeaky brakes and everybody jumped on his ass about that. I didn't, I was like, whoa. What can I spend a ton of money on that'll bring me a few weeks of joy followed by lasting frustration? Hmm. It kind of sucks because I installed the seat, I sat on it, and everybody swears by these seats, and it just didn't seem that comfortable to me. I mean, my old one almost seemed more comfortable. I was feeling a bit defeated. Maybe it's because I haven't actually taken it out and ridden on it yet, and I hope that's the case, because that was an expensive seat not to be comfortable. And it was a pain in the ass to swap that seat out. <laughs> Question of the day, how many miles do you got on your Super 73?